If a telescope is pointing at a star and both are stationary, then obviously the light comes straight into the telescope. In 1729, Bradley found that he had to tip his telescope forward very slightly to get a star in the centre of his telescope. It was assumed that this was due to the motion of the Earth around the Sun. Let us assume that the telescope was moving at 5 mile an hour and had to be tipped 5 degrees. This 5 degree tipping, however, could equally be caused by the ether moving at 5 mile an hour carrying the stars around the Earth. As we see here, the light would be coming in at the same angle and the telescope would still have to be tipped 5 degrees. So tipping the telescope does not tell us whether it is the starlight moving or the telescope moving. However, there is a simple experiment that can determine whether it was the Earth that was moving or the ether and starlight. All that you had to do was record the tipping required for any particular star then fill the telescope with water, which greatly slows down the speed of light in the telescope. So here is the moving telescope filled with water, tipped at 5 degrees, and you can see that the starlight does not now reach the eyepiece at the bottom. This is because the starlight moves much more slowly when passing through water. However, if the telescope is tipped further, say 10 degrees, then the starlight will then be visible again in the eyepiece. It has to be tipped further because the light is now slower when in the telescope. But if the starlight is going past the telescope at 5 mile an hour, then when it is filled with water, no t further tipping is needed because the light is coming in at 5 degrees anyway. The starlight stays on the same path, but is only travelling slower in the water. To recap, if it is the telescope that is moving, then when it is filled with water, it has to be tipped further to see the star. If the telescope is stationary and the starlight drifting past us, then it does not have to be tipped further. In 1871, George Biddle Airy, the Astronomer Royal, performed this experiment. This is a copy from his original report. You can see that the two readings are virtually identical. If it had been the telescope that was moving, Airy expected a figure of 30 seconds of arc. In fact, he only managed to read 0.8 seconds of arc difference. Bradley first discovered stellar aberration, and it is interesting that in his report, Airy mentions that it was now about 100 seconds of arc and that it was still slowly diminishing. This indicates that the speed of light was still decreasing in measurable amounts when Airy performed his experiment in 1871. The result of Airy's experiment, known as Airy's failure, was that the telescope does not have to be tipped further. This proved that it was the incoming light that was moving past a stationary telescope fixed to the stationary Earth. What is interesting in his very brief report of only four pages is that not once did he refer to the astonishing results that the experiment proved that the Earth was stationary. 
This experiment was also dismissed by Wikipedia, which said, Ether drag test, under the main article, Luminiferous Ether. By means of a water-filled telescope, Airy, in 1871, looked for a change in stellar aberration through the refracting water due to an ether drag. Like in all other ether drift experiments, he obtained a negative result. This is a gross distortion of the truth. That he did not have to change the angle proved that it was the ether drifting past the stationary surface of the Earth. This experiment is never taught to university science students. They might begin to question what they were being taught about the cosmos, the universe, the Big Bang, evolution, and much else, if it was realized that the Earth really is at the center of the universe, which is rotating around us, as the Bible always clearly states.